Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. Pirates. The Strongest Justice. Chapter 36. Um, Atlas, I would like to trouble you to help me teach those people in the elite class a lesson. Shuzo said with some embarrassment. Huh. Atlas almost thought he heard wrongly, and quickly cast a doubtful look at Shuzo. Zephyr on the side also listened with interest. I just feel that Smoker and the others are a little too ambitious. They want to learn all six moves at this stage, so I hope you can give them a tip, please. This time Atlas and Zephyr understood a little bit. It's possible that Smoker and the others were too greedy and ignored Shuzo's warning at the beginning. However, Shuzo couldn't find an effective way to persuade them, so he could only do this. It's too late. Everyone, come here. I'll find you a sparring partner today to test your recent training results. Shuzo smiled and said to Smoker and others who were practicing. He forced a harmless smile on his dark face, but why? It feels weird to see it. Boss. Needless to say, this must be the guy from Groos. Brother Atlas. Atlas. Atlas's three roommates were obviously a little surprised. They rarely saw Atlas anymore. There was no way around it. Atlas was the first to get up for exercise every day and the last to go back to the dormitory to rest. He was busy all day long, and the other three people had no chance to talk to him. No, Shuzo instructor, aren't we looking for abuse? When Groose heard that Atlas was here to train with them, as Atlas' roommate, he knew how hard Atlas worked. Coupled with his terrifying talent, his current strength was probably beyond his. It was beyond imagination, and others nodded in agreement. Except for Hina, she has long wanted to test how big the gap between herself and Atlas is, and her eyes only reveal excitement. No, I think you are mistaken. Atlas shook his head in denial. Smoker and others were also slightly stunned. Was it a mistake? It's the seven of you who challenge me. I only use two of the six postures to cope with it. In fact, Atlas took a trick here. Among the six postures, he only practiced Shao and Iron Body to the ultimate level. The other postures were only it can be said to be sparse and ordinary. What? When the others heard this, a trace of anger suddenly flashed in their eyes. Isn't this looking down on people? Although Atlas can't win one-on-one, -on -one, can't we beat him in a group fight? The key is that he still needs to suppress his strength. Everyone present is not a fool, so they naturally understand Shuzo's good intentions, but they still cannot accept it psychologically. It seems that strength should speak for itself. Atlas looked at the changing expressions of everyone, and stopped talking nonsense and directly assumed a posture of being about to fight. Smoker and the others were helpless when they saw this, and immediately they all tensed up. If they were defeated by Atlas like this, they would be embarrassed and thrown into their grandma's house. Chao Yusil. Hina planned to take a preemptive strike and extended fence-like black iron branches from her arms. Within a moment, Atlas was trapped inside. Smoke white domain. Then Smoker quickly activated his fruit ability, and a large amount of smoke penetrated into the encirclement, trying to besiege Atlas. Bang. 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 Atlas naturally would not sit still and wait for death. The casserole-like fist quickly shattered Hina's black sill with terrifying force. But just when Atlas appeared, a minotaur with horns and a nose appeared in Atlas. Above Lars. Finger pistol. The huge cow's hooves attacked Atlas with a sharp sound of breaking through the air. I have to say that even Shuzo, who was watching the battle from the sidelines, secretly applauded this perfect coordination, but unfortunately. Demon fruit power. Atlas didn't expect that among the eight people, there was a zone demon fruit power, but Atlas was not a vegetarian. Iron body Kongmu. Clang. Hulbert felt that his hard ox hoof hit a body other than flesh and blood, like a giant bell. A huge shock force was transmitted from the hoof, and his whole body suddenly trembled. You must know that he is an esper in the form of zone, the cow fruit, and the ox. His strength and physique are not as good as Atlas. Atlas would not let go of Herbert's opportunity to be stunned, even if it was only for a short second. Iron body boxing divine power. Huge power was released crazily on Herbert's body, and his body in human animal form was like paper, flying backwards crazily. Although the others were shocked by this scene, they were not so frightened that they lost all fighting spirit. Fortunately, Herbert Zone's strong recovery ability did not completely lose the ability to fight, but he could only harass the enemy from the side, otherwise it would not be a joke to receive such a punch again. Chow Yu Threshold 
Hina still wants to repeat her old tricks. How can Atlas give her a chance? A red light flashes across her eyes, and the color of the sight is turned on. Shave. Accurately avoiding Hina's fruit power and Smoker's two white punches, he teleported to Rosinant and two other unknown people. There is no way to say that among these seven people, only three of them are the weakest, even if Rosinant is a fruit. A person with abilities, after all, his fruit ability is more inclined to assist assassination, and his frontal combat ability is weak. Hey, hey, boss, don't blame me. After all, I don't want to be tortured by you. Suddenly, Gruss stood in front of Rosinant with this shameless slap in the face. After all, intellectually speaking, Rosinante's fruit ability can perfectly protect them. Emotionally speaking, Rosinant is also his roommate. He must give priority to saving Rosinant. As for the other two, he can't take care of them for the time being. It took Atlas no effort to deal with them, and he only needed two punches to knock them out early. Not long after the battle, they had already lost two members, and one was almost dead. The pressure on them suddenly increased. It's my turn to attack. Atlas grinned, revealing a neat row of large white fangs. Under the sunlight, Smoker and others felt dazzled. Shave. Iron body punching technique broken. The target is still Rosinant, but at this time Smoker also reacted, Smoke White Snake. Snake-shaped white smoke quickly wrapped around Atlas's limbs and torso. Too weak. Atlas ignored Smoker and charged forward with his strong physique, breaking free from the white smoke restraints on his body in an instant. Shaved Iron Body Jade. Atlas's tall body suddenly spun at high speed, but the target was Groos. Combat is also an art. This is not just about immersing yourself in recklessness, but also about timing and overall perspective. Iron Body. Gruss saw a flash of panic on his face when he saw Atlas attacking him, but then he could only hope that his most accomplished Iron Body could block it a little. Bang. Without any suspense, Gruss was directly knocked out and fell heavily to the ground like a broken sack, once again losing one man. Seeing this, the remaining four people quickly hugged together, almost clinging to each other, not giving Atlas a chance to defeat them one by one, but they were too naive, and they knew nothing about Atlas's power. Shaved Iron Body Steel Bull. Atlas rushed towards Smoker and others like a crazy bull, and the ground he passed was like soft soil rolling crazily. Smoke White Jade. Janji and Gun Shield. Naturally, Smoker and others would not sit still and wait for death. An iron shield covered with black guns and a wall of white smoke suddenly stood on the road that Atlas must pass through. I have to say that Devil Fruit is indeed a very magical product that can have a major impact on the battle situation even when the strength gap between the two sides is not large. It's a pity. Dot the strength gap between them and Atlas is too big. Boom. A huge roar rang in the ears. Smoker's white jade and Hina's gun shield were as if they were made of paper. They were defeated in an instant. Atlas, who was still emasculated, was under the horrified expressions of Smoker and others. After being knocked upside down, they flew backwards one by one, struggling feebly on the ground, but they had lost their ability to fight. Do you understand now? What you should do now is to specialize in the six moves that suit you, instead of swallowing them wholeheartedly. Let's see which of you can use the half-baked six moves completely. Fortunately, the one you are fighting against today is your Pao Z. If on the battlefield, what you lose is not just your face, but, your life. Shuzo on the side was stunned when he saw that everyone was defeated so neatly, but he still walked forward quickly and poured chicken soup at Smoker and others, for fear of hitting them too hard. Then Senior Shuzo, I will go back first. Don't forget your promise. Atlas saw that Smoker and others were fine, so he said hello to Shuzo and said he was leaving first. Well, well, don't worry. Finger Pistol Act 47. The heavy and clear sound of gunshots resounded in the sky above the school grounds. Marines who were coming and going turned a blind eye to this and were still busy with their own affairs. Since the last fight with Smoker and the others, Atlas has spent more than two hours sparring with Shuzo almost every day. As a result, Atlas has become more and more comfortable in using the six forms. Shuzo, who was opposite Atlas, had a look of helplessness on his face. I am afraid that only Shuzo, who is now sparring with Atlas every day, clearly knows how terrifying Atlas' current strength is, especially the kind of improvement. The speed simply overturned his understanding of monsters. 
Shuzo was obviously able to suppress Atlas a little with hockey at the beginning, but now he is having more and more difficulty fighting. It feels like Atlas's physique is growing every minute. In fact, Atlas was also very surprised. I don't know if he was beaten too much after coming to the headquarters. He felt that the digestion speed of the cow talisman was much faster. Atlas had a hunch that it would not be long before he could completely digest the cow charm. The spell has been cast, and his body is growing at an extremely terrifying speed. From the most intuitive point of view, Atlas' current height of 2.8 meters actually reaches an astonishing weight of 300 kilograms. If he could return to life now, he would find that the number and density of bones and muscles in his body are far higher than ordinary people. Boom. Another collision, Atlas stood unscathed, not even moving his feet, and Shuzo's fist was clearly covered in armed color. By the way, you kid, why haven't you awakened your weapon color yet? Shuzo said helplessly. Huh. You and Mr. Zephyr didn't teach me either. Atlas spread his hands, also feeling a little headache. Although he had some knowledge about Conqueror's hockey, he only had a rough look at the anime in his previous life, and no one told him about it when he came to the recruit camp. Ah. Really? Maybe. I forgot. A trace of embarrassment appeared on Shuzo's big black face unconsciously. Fortunately, at this time, an assistant not far away came over and relieved Shuzo's embarrassment. Report to Shuzo instructor, Gion Rear Admiral went to Zephyr Chief Instructor's office. Shuzo nodded and said to Atlas, Okay, I will explain hockey to you next time when I have time. I will introduce you to a swordsman first. Atlas had clearly heard what his assistant said and knew that Gion had come to the recruiting camp. Atlas didn't know much about this admiral candidate named Mamasugi in the future. He only knew that she should also be a great swordsman in the future. Even if she was slightly worse than admiral, she was still very powerful. According to this time, Gion should be promoted to vice admiral soon. After all, in terms of strength, she has undoubtedly reached the vice admiral level, but she has not yet reached the level of elite vice admiral but her attainments in swordsmanship are better than it there is no doubt that Russ is strong. In Zephyr's office, Gion is sitting on a chair with his legs crossed in a cross-legged posture, revealing the spider tattoo on his long white legs. The famous sword Kimpira is placed casually next to him, and his delicate face is full of smiles and roundness. Her red lips opened and closed as she chatted and laughed with Zephyr. Long time no see, Mr. Zephyr. I see you are in a good mood recently. Is there any great talent coming to the recruiting camp? Zephyr also smiled and said, It's true, that Atlas guy is an even bigger monster than Kuzan and the others. Oh. Then I want to see what kind of monster can make teacher Zephyr value so much. Gion's eyes lit up, and her interest in Atlas, who she had not yet met, suddenly increased. She knew that Zephyr was not the kind of person who makes random decisions. Just in time, speaking of Atlas, I would like to ask you for a favor. Zephyr said slyly. This child Atlas is not only a genius in physical skills, but also talented in swordsmanship, so I ask you to take the time to teach this child swordsmanship. Seeing that Gion had no objection, Zephyr continued. No problem, I happen to be very interested in that boy, and if there is an additional senior combatant in this department, it will alleviate a lot of pressure. I can also relax a bit. Maybe I still have time to take a vacation. As he spoke, Gion stretched sleepily, revealing his perfect body curves. Dong dong dong, dong dong dong. Come in. Shuzo and Atlas walked into Zephyr's office one after another. Teacher Zephyr, Shuzo said hello to Zephyr first, and then said to Gion who stood up. Long time no see, Gion Rear Admiral, you are still so beautiful, ha ha ha. Thank you for the compliment, Mr. Shuzo. Gion replied politely. In fact, she and Shuzo didn't have much interaction. They just came from Zephyr's sect together, so they were just acquaintances. Oh, by the way, I will introduce you to a swordsman genius. Please help teach him, Shuzo said, pulling out Atlas behind him to introduce him to Gion. Gion was a little stunned for a moment, then looked at each other in understanding with Zephyr, covered his mouth and said with a smile. You must be talking about the monster genius that Mr. Zephyr calls Atlas. I just talked about Atlas with Gion, but I didn't expect you. Zephyr said helplessly but proudly. Gion was obviously also very curious and started to look at Atlas up and down. 
The man in front of her looks to be about 18 years old. He is basically the same height as her. He is full of muscles but does not look bloated at all. Instead, he has a sense of strength and beauty. Some of his damaged clothes indicate that he has just experienced a battle. He probably came over after sparring with Shuzo, and then turned his attention to third generation Kidetsu on Atlas's waist. Demon Sword. Gion looked at Atlas with a somewhat surprised expression. You know, there are very few swordsmen who use demon swords as their own sabers, and many swordsmen even avoid them. That's right, third generation ghost. Atlas said the first words he entered the office, and then slowly pulled out third generation ghost from his waist. The cold light gives the illusion of lighting up the office. What a knife. Seeing this scene, Gion couldn't help but exclaimed in admiration. The quality of this knife was top-notch even among the high-quality swords. Okay, don't show off your sword there, Gion. You happen to have nothing to do these days, so you can come over to the recruiting camp and teach them sword skills. Zephyr said seriously. In fact, there are swordsmanship instructors in the recruitment camp, but they can only teach some relatively simple things, and Atlas has become a swordsman. The swordsmanship instructor himself has not reached the level of cutting iron, so now Atlas's swordsmanship there has been little progress. Don't worry, Teacher Zephyr. I happen to have to stay in the headquarters for a while after this mission, so I will come over and bother you, Teacher Zephyr. Gion has no objection. They are originally from the recruitment camp, and the people who come out of the recruitment camp are Marines' future and fresh blood. It is also one of their responsibilities to help the recruits grow. After all, this is how Marine is making its way in the world step by step. Pass down. The next day, at the recruit training camp, the recruits who had just completed their physical training quickly formed a neat square formation. The original swordsmanship instructors were standing aside obediently, but Atlas didn't know them very well because he had never taken swordsmanship classes since he came to the recruiting camp. Standing in front of the school field was the Gion Rear Admiral. Hello everyone, I am your new swordsmanship instructor Gion, and my current position is the Rear Admiral of the headquarters. Gion said with a smile as he looked at the recruits who were standing solemnly. Now, people who want to learn swordsmanship come out. Soon people came out quickly, not many, only about 40 people. Although some people were a little moved when they saw the beautiful instructor, they did not dare to joke about their future. You must know that the choice of weapons has a decisive impact on future development. Critical. Very good. Then those who have a foundation in swordsmanship stand on my left side, and those who have no foundation on my sword stand on my right side. Gion nodded with satisfaction. With her knowledge, knowledge, and color, she could clearly tell who was. She was satisfied that she had not seen such a person yet. The time I am here to teach you swordsmanship is limited. In order to maximize your benefits, those who have no basic skills will first learn from your original swordsmanship instructor. Gion's arrangement is very reasonable. After all, it is impossible with her swordsmanship level. Go to the recruitment camp and teach them the basics, otherwise it's just killing a chicken with a sledgehammer. Very good, now those who have the basic knowledge come with me. Atlas and others silently followed Gion to a corner of the school grounds, this is the area dedicated to practicing swordsmanship. Now I want to test your swordsmanship. You find your own opponents to spar with each other. I will watch from the sidelines. Gion paused and continued, you have to use a real sword. Wow. The recruits were obviously a little surprised, because they usually use bamboo knives for sparring, and safety is not adequately guaranteed when sparring with real knives. What? Do you have any objections? When Gion heard the recruits, uproar, he immediately stopped smiling and asked with squinted eyes. You must know that she is not a flower vase. Her position as rear admiral is obtained by actual military merits, and behind these military achievements are the corpses of pirates that can be piled up in mountains. Yes. The recruits responded quickly when they saw something was wrong with Gion's face. Bang. Clang. Clang. Soon, after bursts of sounds of golden iron, the battle among the recruits ended in a hurry, and Atlas stood alone. It wasn't that he didn't want to join the battle, but that there was no one at all. Come and be his opponent. I just took a look. First of all, you need to practice your basic swordsmanship again, secondly, your swords have no murderous intent or bloodiness. My swordsmanship was honed on the battlefield. It is a killing sword. 
Giyong He looked at the people who had stopped and commented. Now, Atlas comes out. Fight me and let me see your swordsmanship. Yes. Atlas quickly stepped out. The famous sword Kimpira, the great sword of Timuritsu with 21 skills, I didn't find out what level Gion's sword is, but the sword used by the candidate admiral should not be that bad. Gion gently stroked the blade of the sword, introduced to Atlas. The one who responded to Gion was third generation Kidetsu, which Atlas slowly pulled out. Yidaliu Shinglo. A slash was directed straight towards Gion. This star falling move was made to simulate the force of a falling meteor. It can be said to be a move that combines strength and explosive power. Well done. Gion's eyes suddenly lit up, and armament hockey instantly wrapped around Kinpira from his wrist. One sword style steel cutting flash. See Circle Calendar December 1503, Marineford. Since the last time Gion came to the recruiting camp as a swordsmanship instructor, Atlas's sparring partner has also changed from Shuzo to Gion. After such a long period of training, Atlas also completely digested the ox talisman, and seamlessly connected it with a rabbit talisman. As he expected, the rabbit talisman was mainly to strengthen his lower limbs. It can be said that now ah the power of truss is no less than that of the naval headquarters vice admiral, and his power is still increasing at a terrifying speed. In the pirate world, strong men like Garp and Zephyr generally have relatively strong upper bodies. It does not mean that their lower limbs are weak, but that their organs are very powerful, and now Atlas also has that's the tendency, but the rabbit charm balances his physical strength well. As for the level of swordsmanship, According to Gion, Atlas's swordsmanship style tends to focus on large openings and closings, with insufficient microcontrol, and is suitable for overwhelming people with force. At this stage, Atlas is mainly doing polishing his body, and has no idea of eating devil fruit for the time being. He doesn't want to create a weakness for himself, unless he encounters a very powerful devil fruit. And Atlas had a hunch that he was just one step away from armament hockey awakening. The beach behind the recruit camp. Zephyr's body is straight and facing the sea. This former marine admiral is still shining for a just cause even after retirement. So much so that his temperament changed drastically after he was betrayed by the justice he believed in, and he fell into extreme thoughts. It has to be said that the decisions of the world government are very wise. It can only be said that the thinking of politicians is different from that of normal people. Same. Even if Atlas doesn't agree with his concept of justice, he still has to admire his character. He will not let Zephyr fall into this situation in his later years. Teacher Zephyr, I heard that you were looking for me. Atlas, who was training, was summoned here by Shuzo, and he is still confused. Ah, I plan to explain to you some training about hockey today. Originally, this was supposed to be the content of the third year, but your body has already met the conditions for awakening hockey. Zephyr heard Atlas' arrival, he turned around and said. Oh. Then it's up to you, Teacher Zephyr. Atlas said with a serious look, understanding. Now Haki is the last shortcoming in his strength. To put it simply, even if his current physical strength and power level have reached the level of the Vice Admiral, he is still no match for the Vice Admiral. Moreover, if he encounters Logia, he can only be beaten passively. Even if he wants to win, he can only win. Rely on physical strength to grind the enemy to death. Haki is a power hidden in everyone's body. It is divided into three types. Haki, Haki, Armed, and Overlord. Zephyr paused and continued, You have awakened to Haki, I believe I don't need to elaborate too much. Quote. As for armament Haki, its function is to improve personal defense. It is equivalent to wearing a layer of invisible armor on the body. It can also evolve into attack power. It can also help you contact the entity of Logia Demon Fruit Power. The armor color can be obtained through practice. Keep increasing the quality and quantity of hockey. Armed is also called emission in Wajiguo, just like seeing and hearing is called heart net in Sky Island. To be specific, there are three levels in the training of armed colors. These levels are actually just the skills of using armed colors. The most important thing is the quality and quantity of your armed colors. The first level is hardening and entangling. It can only be hardened initially, and then through practice, the weapon can be entangled. The second level is to expose the weapon color. What is different from the first level is that the weapon at this stage the color does not need to be in direct contact with the object being attacked, 
the principle of the third level of armed color is to make the armed color flow, so as to achieve the effect of internal destruction. I know a little bit about this atlas. Zan Momomaru's, Asakura alone, is the second stage of armed color. No wonder he has always claimed that he is, the most defensive man in the world. Although it is a bit exaggerated, it also covers it up. It can't be said that he is powerful in armed colors. Actually, most people in the world only have the first level of weaponry, but the strong one must be the Grand Master. Zephyr looked at Atlas, who was meditating, and added. Don't worry, Teacher Zephyr, I know the importance of armed color. Atlas smiled when he heard this. He knew that Zephyr was afraid that he would underestimate the cultivation of armed color and deliberately reminded him. Well, it's good that you understand. Zephyr was somewhat relieved and continued, Conqueror's hockey is the most unreasonable type of Conqueror's hockey, because not everyone has Conquerors, and the qualification requirements are very strict. There are only one million people. There is only one awakened one among them, Conqueror's hockey. Among the Marines, only Sengoku is the only one, but among the pirates, the owner of Conquerors is like a Crucian carp crossing the river. Zephyr said with a look of anger on his face, obviously very helpless about this situation. Furthermore, conquerors can also be entangled like the weapon color, but this is a skill that only top experts can understand. Ordinary pirates like that are just indulging in the glory of conquerors. Atlas nodded in agreement. In the original work, Kaido only used conquerors' entanglement to give King Luffy a king addiction. As for others, it is estimated that no one else has touched this field. Actually, in my opinion, the so-called conqueror's hockey is just the spirit, body, and will, which respectively correspond to the color of knowledge, color of weapons, and conquerors. The sight color uses the seventh sense besides your six senses, which is spiritual perception, and consumes your spirit, the arming color is closely related to your body, and it can only be awakened with enough physical strength. The same is true for armament hockeys the total amount is also related to your physique, conquerors is a manifestation of will, which can have a shocking effect on the enemy. Zephyr continued to throw out his, dry information, to Atlas, and Atlas also listened with interest. This was the experience and insights of a ceiling level strongman. No one elsewhere was so open to him. Broken to pieces, Atlas naturally treasured it very much, and wished he could write it down word for word. If you don't have conqueror's qualifications, you might as well ask that old guy Garp for advice. Zephyr looked at Atlas, who looked serious, and nodded with satisfaction. Huh. Doesn't Vice Admiral Garp not have conquerors? Atlas was a little confused. He had never heard of Garp having conqueror's hockey in his previous life. Ha ha. You should have felt Garp's so-called, iron fist of love. Zephyr teased. Naturally. He had read the information about Atlas when he entered the camp, and he also knew that he was on Garp's ship. Come to the headquarters. Garp's, Iron Fist of Love, is actually a kind of entanglement of will. According to Garp, it is a fist filled with love, so even if he doesn't have conquerors, he can still use it with similar effects. Explained clearly to Atlas. In fact, every top fighter in the sea is not only the best in the world in terms of physical fitness and hockey, but also has his own unique special skills. Like, Black Arm, Zephyr, his weapon color is definitely the best in the sea, while, Iron Fist, Garp is good at using the entanglement of will. As for how to guide the armed color, during this period, you can add a training item every day and let Shuzo hit you with the armed color. This is the most intuitive way for you to feel the armed color. Zephyr said in the calmest tone in the most horrific way. In fact, Zephyr also came up with the most suitable method based on Atlas's physical condition. That is, Atlas's monster-like recovery ability can withstand it. If it were Smoker and the others, they might be destroyed directly. Today is the annual assessment time for the recruit camp, and all the recruits have been called together. It can be said that this is the most uneasy time for recruits, because everyone is told that they only have one chance to repeat a grade before entering the camp, so for those who want to hang around and are not very talented, this is a daunting challenge. This year-end assessment is mainly based on the list of pairs provided by the instructor. After all, the instructor who is still a subordinate during the training knows their strength best, so the allocated opponents are relatively reasonable. Several temporary arenas were built on the recruitment camp's campus. 
Although they were temporary structures, they were still not strong enough to be destroyed by the marines in the recruitment camp. Don't underestimate the productivity of the pirate world, not to mention that this place is still naval headquarters where Superman walks everywhere, Marineford. In front of the arena are rows of stands, arranged in a trapezoidal shape from high to low. Sitting on the top is Admiral of Headquarters Sengoku, who is also the only current Marine Admiral. At this time, Kong no longer manages Marine very much. It can be said that the internal transfer of power within Marine has been completed, and Marine's investiture ceremony will begin only when the appointment of world government arrives. Next to Sengoku is Kazaru Vice Admiral who has a wretched look and wears brown sunglasses. As for the other two monsters, Vice Admiral, is temporarily absent from the headquarters due to mission reasons. Even Aokiji Kuzan, whom Atlas met before entering the camp, is not there. Come. Of course, Gion Rear Admiral, who temporarily stayed in the recruiting camp as a swordsman instructor and Atlas's sparring partner, also came to the school grounds to watch this noisy end-of-year assessment. As for the other three or three generals and officers, Atlas was not very familiar with them, so he couldn't even name them. Others in the recruit camp were a little excited. After all, it was rare to see so many marine generals at once, especially Sengoku, who was the most powerful marine. Even the recruits from the headquarters had never seen them so close. Saw Sengoku. Wow. That's Sengoku Admiral. It's the first time I've seen a real person. It's really majestic. Why haven't I seen Vice Admiral Garp? Hiss, Kazaru Vice Admiral is here too, but why do I feel that Kazaru Vice Admiral is getting more and more handsome the more I look at him? I don't know which cutie said the last sentence. Atlas can only say that he has a unique vision. Soon, Zephyr and Shuzo appeared in front of the recruits. After nodding slightly with Sengoku, he looked at the recruits who were whispering. Everyone is here. Silence. Arrange your team now. As soon as they heard Zephyr's order, the recruits quickly stood up in line like a conditioned reflex, and their movements were uniform and without any confusion. This made Zephyr nod with satisfaction and continued, This year-end assessment is a test of your practice results over the past year. I don't want you to become marine bugs who just want to hang around. You are the future of marine. It is the hope of the people of the world. Therefore, please go all out for every assessment and do not let down your sweat and efforts. Every word of Zephyr comes from the heart. This old man who has devoted his life to Marine has placed ardent hopes on every student, hoping that they can shine in a just cause. Shuzo, you will be in charge of the rest. Zephyr told Shuzo behind him and sat down next to Sengoku. What a group of energetic kids. I feel several years younger when I see them. Sengoku couldn't help but sigh as he looked at the young faces in the audience. Yes, they are all Marine's future. By the way, why isn't that guy Garp here? Zephyr also smiled when he heard this, and then asked. That Garp went to New World, and before leaving, he took my senbei with him. Not to mention Garp, I still want it, but when I mention Garp Sengoku, my head jumps and my head feels big. Ha ha ha, it is indeed what that guy Garp can do, but now let's look at the performance of the recruits. Zephyr was also helpless about Sengoku and Garp falling in love and killing each other. It seemed that Garp was as inconsistent as ever, which made Sengoku very upset. Trouble. Hey, what teacher Zephyr wants us to see is your favorite student Kano's atlas. Just as Sengoku and Zephyr were chatting and laughing, a very unscrupulous voice suddenly came from next to them. It was Kazaru Porosalino with a pouty look on his face. Of course, Atlas doesn't rely too much on fruit abilities like you. Porosalino. Zephyr said with a somewhat unkind tone. What he has always criticized about Porosalino is his lack of physical skills. In his opinion, Porosalino's talent should have been better than Sakazuki's, but his attitude of following the crowd made him feel that this was a waste of talent. So Zephyr has always been at odds with Kazaru. Hey, teacher Zephyr, don't say that. You can become a top powerhouse even if the power of the fruit is different. Don't be too harsh. Kazaru still pouted and said in a tone that didn't deserve a beating. Okay, okay, stop arguing and let's watch the competition. Sengoku saw that the two of them were starting to argue again, so he quickly stopped him. After finally giving himself a day off, he didn't want to be caught in the middle. On the school field, Shuzo had already started arranging groups for each arena with the list in his hand. Arena number. 
1. Smoker vs. Hina. Area 2. Bruce vs. Herbert. There are 10 arenas in the entire school field, which is enough for the entire school field to have 10 arenas, which is enough for the assessment to be completed in one day. On the first stage of the school field, Smoker and Hina were already fighting together. Smoker and Hina are both fruit ability users, and their personal fighting style preferences are also the use of abilities. However, Hina has not mastered armament hockey yet. It can be said that Smoker is invincible. It must be said that Logia can force a 50 to 50 against anyone. Smoke White Fist. Janji and Gun Shield. Smoker and Hina are both very familiar with each other and know each other's fighting habits and methods very well, but in terms of basic physical fitness, Smoker is definitely slightly better. Chao Yushin. Countless black iron branches tried to surround Smoker. But Smoker avoided this move by directly transforming into elements. In fact, if the black threshold can tightly wrap Smoker, then his elemental transformation may not come out. Shave. Both of them have a tacit understanding of how to use Shave in close combat, but Smoker is obviously stronger than Hina in terms of physical strength, so he is slightly better in speed. Smoke White Fist Finger Pistol. However, before the two could meet, Smoker's fist flew out, and a finger pistol was about to hit Hina hard. John G. Iron Body. The thick black silk quickly covered Hina's beautiful figure, and Smoker's finger pistol flew in vain. Since Atlas taught them a lesson last time, Smoker chose to practice finger pistol, shaving an iron body first, while Hina mainly practiced iron body, shaving and paper arts. At this stage, Tempest Kick and Moonwalk are still difficult for them, because there is a certain advanced relationship between these two styles and shaving, and the requirements for foot strength are very high. Boom. 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 There were several more collisions, but without exception, Hina's attacks were dodged by Smoker's elemental form. Hey, what a scary little brother, Logia. As soon as he heard this tone, he knew it was Kazaru, he was really an old on Myoji. The lower limit of Logia Devil Fruit is still very high. Sengoku on the side also nodded and commented. In fact, the outcome of this battle has long been decided. Although Smoker's Logia was once considered a shame in Logia, the level of unreasonableness cannot be underestimated. As expected, the final winner of the battle was Smoker. However, Smoker's image was not much better. The clothes on his body were basically in the shape of strips of cloth, and there were bloodstains all over his body, which made him look a bit miserable. As time progresses, the assessment is coming to an end, but there is no arrangement for Atlas's opponent yet, and it is not known what Zephyr's thoughts are. Atlas, in the middle of the school field. Atlas was stunned for a moment and then understood. After all, he made too much noise when fighting, and the ring could no longer meet the needs of the venue. As for who his opponent was, Atlas also had some guesses in his mind. Atlas slowly walked to the center of the school field with everyone watching. Opposite him was Shuzo, who was naked from the waist up. Obviously he didn't want to scrap another piece of clothing. Atlas looked at Shuzo quietly, his eyes full of eagerness to try. After all, he had fought against Shuzo the most times in the past year, but he had never really defeated Shuzo once, but the result this time should be it will be different. Is this kid so strong now? He actually wants Shuzo to be punished himself. Sengoku was a little surprised. Apparently he was busy with official duties and did not pay too much attention to Atlas. Another reason was that he was very relieved about Zephyr, an old comrade in arms. Don't worry, it's not certain whether Shuzo can win. Zephyr was obviously a little happy. After all, there was nothing more proud than showing off his proud student in front of his old comrades. Shave. Atlas and Shuzo started to attack in a tacit understanding, obviously intending to fight directly in close quarters. Atlas did not take advantage and gave up the use of swordsmanship to carry out long-range attacks. Iron Body Fist Shatter. The fist shadows all over the sky were attacking Shuzo. Shuzo was not in a hurry, his eyes flashed red, and he was locked in sight. Paper Arts Ooze. Suddenly, Shuzo's body rolled freely between Atlas's fists like a puddle of mud. When Atlas saw this, he didn't intend to do any useless work. He took a step back and made a gun shape with both hands. Fly Finger Pistol Gatling. The vacuum bullets were released wantonly as if they were free of charge, and the huge kinetic energy even produced violent roars in the air. Iron Body Steel Armed. 
Shuzo's pupils shrank, the blood flow in his body accelerated, and his whole body was covered in armed colors. The flying finger pistol kept hitting Shuzo's dark body, splashing sparks, but the huge force still made Shuzo's body unable to stop moving back, fall back. In fact, Shuzo has no choice. When Zephyr taught him hockey, he also said that it is very stupid to cover the whole body with hockey, because the total amount of hockey for a person is limited. Such behavior that covers the whole body will, firstly, reduce hockey's defense power for those who have insufficient training in hockey, and secondly, it will consume too much of hockey. However, Atlas's flying finger pistol was too dense and fast, and its power should not be underestimated, so Shuzo had to use a lot of hockey in order to maintain the fighting status later. Tempest Kick Chaos. Shave. Shuzo was not willing to be a passive target. He raised his right foot and launched a series of chaotic vacuum slashes towards Atlas. He also used his body shave to quickly get closer to Atlas. Well done. Ha ha ha. Atlas laughed, relying on his powerful iron body skills to forcefully carry Shuzo's tempest kick off. Clear bloodstains appeared on Atlas's body, and then slowly disappeared and turned into less obvious white marks. This. Sengoku in the stands was a little surprised. Although he knew from the intelligence that Atlas's self-healing ability was at the monster level, he didn't expect it to be so pervert. However, Shuzo was not surprised at all. He was used to it. He just quickly closed the distance between him and Atlas, trying to take the opportunity to give Atlas a hard blow. Return of Life Iron Body Valkyrie Arm. Facing Shuzo's offensive, Atlas did not dodge. His raised right arm suddenly swelled, and the sleeves on his arms turned into debris. His blue-black fist collided with the speeding Shuzo. This martial arts arm is the result of his recent practice of returning life. He has been able to pour consciousness into his arm. Although the return of life is not complete, it is a small achievement. The explosive force caught Shuzo off guard. Despite the defense given to him by his armor, the terrifying force still knocked Shuzo away. Good boy, you really gave me a surprise, ha ha ha. Zephyr laughed heartily. Sengoku on the side was speechless. After all, Atlas had given him a big surprise today. The strongest justice. Sengoku was a little distracted. Maybe, this kid can really do it. Marineford, recruit camp campus. What a terrifying power. Shuzo stood up slowly in the middle of the school field and sighed with a complicated look on his face. This is the first time he has said these words after meeting Atlas. Every time he fights with Atlas, he can feel this helpless power. I lost. Congratulations, Atlas. Shuzo was a little depressed but at the same time he was happy for Atlas. Shuzo instructor accepted. Atlas said modestly. Thanks to Shuzo's sparring, his strength has improved so quickly, so it's naturally impossible for him to show off his rhetoric at this time. Moreover, they are not engaged in a life and death battle. Enough is enough and they just need to understand the gap between the two sides. See Circle Calendar March 1504, Headquarters Recruit Camp Campus. A young man about 2.8 meters tall with a resolute expression stood in the center of the school ground. His smooth muscles fit perfectly on his body, as if he was wearing a set of armor that could be used in battles, which was intimidating. Opposite the young man is a burly, dark-skinned man with a black face. The man's hands are covered with a layer of black and purple shiny armament hockey, and he is constantly beating the young man in front of him. These two people were Atlas and Shuzo. Based on Zephyr's suggestion, Atlas shamelessly recommended himself as Shuzo's human punch bag. Feeling the collision between armament hockey and his body, Atlas' understanding of armament color became deeper and deeper. He had a hunch that with just one opportunity, his armament color would be completely awakened. Okay, today should be the day of actual combat training, so let's get here first. Shuzo slowly took off his arms and said to Atlas, who looked enjoying himself. Practical training is the second year project of the Marine Recruit Camp. In the first year, a lot of resources are spent on training recruits. It is impossible to send recruits to the battlefield in the first year, which is tantamount to massacre. However, recruits cannot be cultivated in a greenhouse, so starting from the second year, recruits will often be led to experience the cruelty of war. In the original work, Zephyr met the idiot Whitebeard too and Miss Bargen when he led Ain and Bins to conduct actual combat training. In order to protect the recruits, 
Zephyr was in dire straits, and because of Zephyr's asthma attack, his arm was amputated. Of. Hey, 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 kids, we're going to the Sabayati archipelago soon. A strong man with scars on his face and open clothes was holding a mace with dense barbs. He stood on the bow of the ship and smiled wildly at the crowd of pirates below. Oh 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 oh. Ha ha ha, new world is coming. Captain, let's go first and pull Whitebeard down from the throne of being the strongest in the world. Ha 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 ha. Of course, the captain is a pirate supernova with a bounty of 90 million. The pirates laughed wantonly, after all, they firmly believed that there was a man on their ship who could become the pirate king. Naval headquarters, Marineford Harbor. A row of serious-looking Marine soldiers stood in front of the port, headed by Marine Recruit Battalion Chief Instructor Zephyr. Recruits, justice must be poured out with blood. Today, I will lead you in the first actual combat training of the year. This is not an exercise, but a bloody battlefield. Zephyr looked around the faces of the recruits and continued, Our target this time is the Mad Dog Pirates. The captain is the pirate Supernova Diaz who has a bounty of 90 million, and the first mate Carlos has a bounty of 5,500. 1 million, second officer Bukhara has a bounty of 50 million belly, and the rest of the pirates have bounties ranging from one to another, and this is all the information I can provide you. Soon, a group of recruits headed in the direction of Sabayati Archipelago, led by Zephyr. Teacher Zephyr, are we going to the Sabayati Archipelago? Atlas leaned against the side of the ship and said to Zephyr with a smile. Yes, according to the intelligence, Mad Dog's group should want to dive from Sabayati's coating to the Fish Men Island to go to the New World. After all, this is the tradition of pirates. Zephyr said with a smile. Does the teacher have any other information about them? Ha ha ha. Atlas was a little curious. To be honest, this bounty pirate didn't really appeal to him, but Zephyr should have other deep meanings in choosing this pirate group as their target. Ha ha ha, you have to look for these with your own eyes. After all, you won't be able to get accurate information every time in future missions. Zephyr looked at Atlas who was full of curiosity and couldn't help laughing. Ha ha ha, that's right. Atlas heard the words and didn't go into details anymore. After all, he was not afraid of the changes in the mere 90 million pirates. Report to Chief Instructor Zephyr. There are traces of the mad dog pirates ahead. A marine on the observation deck reported loudly. Okay. Keep going. On the other side of the mad dog pirate's ship, Diaz, whose face was covered with scars, looked at the marine warship approaching at great speed, and unconsciously narrowed his eyes, showing a cruel look. Kids. Marine is here. This is a gift for Lousy to enter the new world, ha 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 ha. It just so happened that he felt that his bounty was a bit low. Maybe if he slaughtered this warship, his bounty would go up. Soon, warships and pirate ships docked not far from the Sabayati archipelago. Boys, kill all these marines for Lousy. Diaz put the mace on his shoulder and smiled ferociously at the marines. Although he noticed Zephyr's presence, because Zephyr had long since retired to the background, Diaz did not recognize the former Marine Admiral for a while. Recruiters, this battle is completely left to you. Super fast shave. As soon as Zephyr finished speaking, Atlas used Diaz to rush away. After all, as the strongest recruit, he accepted the Captain Diaz without hesitation. As for the deputy with a bounty of more than 50 million, it's up to Smoker and the others. Boom. Huh. Iron body. Before Diaz could react, Atlas' fist was imprinted on Diaz's body. But what puzzled Atlas was that there was no feeling of penetrating the flesh. Instead, it was like hitting a piece of steel. Although he was just a casual blow, it shouldn't have achieved nothing. You guys, Lousy is a paramesha steel fruit user, ha ha ha. Although Diaz is surprised by Atlas's speed, I am not afraid at all with his devil fruit. Ever since he got the steel fruit, no one has broken through his defense. Iron body boxing piercing. Puff. The huge fist fell on Diaz again. Although I don't understand why people in the pirate world like to leak their information to the enemy, Atlas is not the kind of person who likes nonsense. Just come to iron body. Boxing teaches him how to behave. Ah. Steel fruit. Lousy thought it was a tofu fruit. Atlas looked at Diaz's body on the ground and said mockingly. Soon, the battle between the hunter and the prey ended. Lines of marines came and went counting the trophies. 
Unfortunately, no valuable items such as devil fruit and famous knives were found. After all, the latter was fine, but the former was not. Generally, you will eat it directly when you get it. Devil fruit is something that can be quickly converted into combat power. Although the price on the black market is 100 million belly, it is often priceless. How is it? Atlas, your armed color. On the warship, Zephyr looked at Atlas who looked calm and asked. Atlas was not surprised either. After all, this was a matter of course. With his current physique and belief, it would only be sooner or later for him to awaken to his armed nature. Eng, I suddenly woke up. Atlas said and raised his arm, and the black and red hockey quickly wrapped around it, like a blood-stained arm armor. An armed color with such strength, just after awakening. Zephyr was a little surprised. The quality of Atlas's armed color was not at all like that of a newly awakened one, but when he thought of Atlas's monster-like appearance, his body felt relieved. Let's go, there is an uninhabited island just ahead, go try your weapon color. Atlas was also a little moved. If he could ask Zephyr to give him guidance when he first awakened, then he would have a clearer direction for his future training. But it was impossible for them to take action directly on the warship. With their current physique, although it had not reached the exaggerated level of destroying the island in one blow, a mere warship was still not enough for them to deal with. Soon, the warship docked at the uninhabited island. The rest of the marines did not go to the island. They just stayed on the warship and watched from a distance. After all, they did not want to be accidentally injured by the battle between these two people. Teacher Zephyr, I have to use my full strength. Be careful. Atlas grinned, his hands covered in armed color, his leg muscles tightened, and his body's fascia was stretched to the limit. Razor. Life return iron body Valkyrie arm. Ha 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 ha, come on, kid, don't underestimate me. Zephyr also laughed, his smile revealing absolute confidence. After all, he is Marine's highest combat power, black arm, Zephyr. Boom. The black red giant like fist and Zephyr's, petite, fist shining with black purple luster quickly collided, as if a thousand waves of air were aroused, and ferocious cracks spread out on the ground centered on the two of them. Ha 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 ha. So happy. Boom. 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 There were several more powerful collisions, but Atlas only retreated a little, without any physical discomfort. Good boy, you are so powerful and armed. Come on, let me see your limit. Zephyr was also pleased to see Hunter Shin. He raised his fist and was about to hit Atlas on the body. However, something strange happened. Zephyr's fist had not yet touched Atlas, but Atlas seemed to feel a wave of energy coming towards him. Display your armed colors. Atlas' face darkened. No matter how powerful his newly awakened weaponry was, he was still in the hardening stage in terms of skills. Ha ha ha, yes, let's feel the weapon color of the second stage. Atlas said nothing, and quickly crossed his arms in front of him, covered with a large amount of armed colors, his feet firmly grasped the ground, and his waist sank slightly. Boom. The huge impact knocked Atlas back more than 10 meters, but Atlas's body shape did not change. It was just that a long furrow was plowed deeply into the ground. Shave. Atlas didn't stop at all. A big pit instantly appeared on the ground he stepped on, and he was close to Zephyr again in a moment. Iron Body Boxing Technique 100 Penetrations. This is a move developed by Atlas before specifically to deal with hockey users. Although it cannot be compared with the terrifying penetration of emission, it can still cause a little trouble for Zephyr. After Zephyr boxed with Atlas again, he discovered something strange. It felt as if a force penetrated his arm defense and acted directly on his fist, but this penetration was basically useless to him. It doesn't do anything, it's like being bitten by a mosquito. That's a really good move. Zephyr didn't understand how Atlas developed these weird moves, but they often had miraculous effects, just like this move, 100 penetration. If it were someone else, he would have said maybe you have to drink a pot. You must know that in a battle between strong men, even a moment of confusion may tilt the balance of victory. Teacher Zephyr, try this again. Atlas curled his lips, and the rich armed color quickly covered his whole body, as if he was wearing a black and red armor. Two black lines extended from the corners of his eyes to his neck, revealing a strange beauty, and Atlas's body quickly compressed, directly becoming two and a half meters tall. Teacher Zephyr. I haven't fully developed this move yet. I hope you can give me some advice. 
the combination of hockey and the return of life. Zephyr looked at the, little man, in front of him, Zephyr was 3.48 meters tall, and murmured. Brush. Atlas in this form seems to be completely unaffected by gravity. Under the terrifying speed blessed by the rabbit charm, it seems that even the light cannot catch his figure, just like a ghost in the dark night. Zephyr's heart trembled, and his body immediately tensed up. He quickly locked onto Atlas' figure, but it was too late. Armed Iron Body Boxing Heavy Hammer Atlas's fist suddenly swelled and struck Zephyr like a war hammer. The part of his arm that was in contact with the air even burst into flames due to the violent friction. Zephyr felt an oppressive shadow in his heart, but he still endured the discomfort and used hockey to parry. Bang! A huge sound spread from the island to the surroundings, and even Marine staying on the warship felt a tinnitus and subsequent dizziness. When the smoke and dust dissipated, two figures, one large and one small, facing each other were revealed, evenly matched. Cough, cough, ha, ha, ha. Suddenly, Zephyr slowly bent his tall body, began to pant violently, and his face gradually turned red. Ha. Huh. Atlas saw that something was wrong. Logically speaking, the battle just now would not consume much physical energy for Zephyr, but he suddenly frowned, as if he remembered something. Divine Speed Razor. Atlas quickly returned to the warship, and regardless of everyone's surprised looks, he quickly rushed into Zephyr's room and smashed it open without even opening the door. Sea Circle Calendar 1504, an unknown island in the waters near Sabayati Archipelago. Atlas put the asthma medicine he had brought into Zephyr's mouth and slowly patted Zephyr's thick back. Finally, Zephyr's face slowly calmed down and his breathing gradually returned to normal. It turned out that Zephyr had just suffered an asthma attack, which made him weak. Fortunately, Atlas seemed to have heard that Zephyr had asthma problems before, so he immediately brought the medicine on the ship. In fact, Zephyr usually carries medicine with him. But I was killed when I fought with Atlas just now. Headquarters Recruitment Camp, Zephyr Office. Teacher Zephyr, that day. Atlas asked worriedly. A week has passed since their actual combat training. Although he tied with Zephyr in the last attack, he would not be so arrogant that he now has the highest combat strength in the department. It's okay, it's an old problem. Zephyr didn't care. It's not like he hasn't seen a doctor about his asthma, but he accumulated too many hidden injuries when he was young, and now there is no cure for this problem. Atlas didn't say much after hearing this. After all, Zephyr was a former Marine Admiral and the current instructor of the recruit camp. The medical resources he enjoyed were far beyond what he could have imagined. Without continuing this topic, Zephyr remembered the last battle and asked. How long can you maintain the state you were in last time? Huh. It should. Dot can last for a long time. Atlas replied with some uncertainty. If I'm not mistaken, the move you developed is a combination of life return and hockey. It should consume a lot of hockey and physical strength. Ah, that's right, and I haven't mastered the method of returning life yet, so I may be a little lacking in power. As for the consumption of physical strength and hockey, I'm not too worried. I feel that my hockey capacity should be, higher than that of ordinary people. A lot more. As Atlas spoke, he covered hockey all over his body and continued, I feel like it's okay to continue fighting for several days and nights by covering my whole body like this. Zephyr's pupils shrank when he heard this, and a look of shock could not be suppressed on his face. You remind me of a person, an extremely talented pirate. Oh. Who is it? Douglas Bullet. Bullet. Atlas was a little unfamiliar, but he didn't remember such a character in the original work. Bullet, known as the Devil's Descendant, was a former crew member of the Roger Pirates. In Sea Circle Calendar 1499, when he was 22 years old, Marine launched a buster call on him. In the end, he was defeated because of exhaustion of physical strength. At that time, Garp and Sengoku is also a person involved in the arrest, and is currently being held in Impel Down LV.6. His physical talents are similar to yours, and he has extremely terrifying hockey power. Zephyr said with a somewhat solemn expression. Although he did not participate in the battle that year, he was very surprised to learn the result after Sengoku and Garp's dictation. He can only say that he is worthy of being called the successor of the demon. Although Atlas was a little surprised, he was not afraid at all. After all, these people were just stepping stones for him to become the strongest. 
So, never look down on anyone, there will never be a shortage of monsters in this sea. Zephyr warned with a serious look. Yes, teacher Zephyr. Atlas is not the kind of person who underestimates the enemy. He still understands that a lion must fight a rabbit with all his strength. Teacher Zephyr, I have one more thing to report to you. Dong dong dong, dong dong dong. Please come in. Recruit Atlas, I met Sengoku Admiral. Atlas walked to Sengoku's desk and saluted with a standard military salute. When Sengoku heard the voice, he reluctantly looked up from the document and raised his hand to adjust his frog glasses. He still had the same fluffy head and braided beard. Is something wrong? Captain Atlas. Sengoku is a little confused. Logically speaking, the current Atlas should be in the recruitment training period, and there should be no intersection with him for the time being. Report to Sengoku Admiral. Recruit Atlas to apply for early graduation after the year. Oh. Can you tell me the reason? I think the recruiting camp is no longer very helpful to the growth of my strength. For me now, fighting is the best nourishment, and I am ready to step onto the world stage. After a pause, Atlas continued with a smile. Besides, I think the pirates should be looking forward to the coming of fear. Boom, boom, boom. Sengoku knocked on the table slowly, his eyes flashing with wisdom from time to time. He was thinking about what kind of changes Atlas's appearance would bring to his layout. As Marines, the resourceful general, Sengoku could not be careless. Whenever he issues an order, his every move will be closely linked to countless lives in the world. Okay, I understand. Have you and Zephyr asked for permission? After a moment, Sengoku finally came back from his thoughts and asked slowly. You know, Zephyr is the chief instructor of the recruiting camp, and you must get his approval before graduating early. Ah, I have already told Mr. Zephyr, and he supports my decision. Atlas was prepared for it, and Zephyr requested that he come here this time. Zephyr also received news about Sengoku's strategic layout in New World. Sengoku understands, it seems that Atlas is no longer willing to be lonely after two years in the recruiting camp. After all, men like this belong to the cruel battlefield. After listening to Atlas's words, Sengoku already had a plan in mind for where Atlas would go after graduation. Okay, please leave first. I will inform you of the content of your graduation trial then. In fact, Atlas originally told Zephyr that he planned to graduate from the recruitment camp now. After all, he has already learned everything he thinks he should learn, and his armed color has been awakened. It is a waste to stay in the recruitment camp now. Time, it's better to go out and experience it early, maybe you can hone your weapon color more deeply. But Zephyr rejected his proposal outright, thinking that his armed color had just awakened, and at least he had to be proficient in some basic uses of armed color before he could officially graduate. Moreover, Atlas's life return was still not at a certain level. Right now, he can only put his consciousness into his arms. If he stays in the training camp, Zephyr can also give him some advice in this regard. Once Atlas completely returns his life and successfully cultivates, he will basically be able to run rampant in the paradise. Even if he encounters a big pirate in the new world, he will still be able to fight. The location of your graduation trial this time is G8 Fortress, and the commander is Jonathan Vice Admiral. Although there are rumors that, G8 Fortress is a large and inappropriate fortress, don't underestimate Jonathan. Just ask him for more advice after you get there. In the waters near Marineford, a speedboat flying the marine flag was galloping quickly in the uninhabited waters. Atlas on the boat was steering the rudder of the speedboat with some boredom. His destination this time was the G8 Fortress. That is where he will conduct his graduation trials in the next three months. Originally, according to the practice of previous years, the headquarters should dispatch warships to send the recruits who participated in the trial to their respective assigned warships one by one. However, Atlas's situation is a bit special. He applied for early graduation on his own, and it is impossible for the headquarters to specially a warship was sent to pick him up, and Sengoku and the others were very confident about Atlas's strength, so under Sengoku's decision, he was assigned a speedboat that had been eliminated by Marine as a means of transportation. Ah, when will this broken ship get to the G8 fortress? Atlas was speechless, saying that even the eliminated speedboat shouldn't be so useless. Feeling a little bored, Atlas picked up the chart next to him and read it. 
This chart was specially surveyed and mapped by the Marine troops. It is much more precise than any chart on the market. After all, every Marine uses it. Life upholds justice. Sometimes a detailed chart may be a life-saving straw. Eni's lobby used to be the capital of the Seven Waters. It's a good place to upgrade this broken ship. Atlas silently planned in his mind, and then took out the permanent pointer to the capital of the Seven Waters that Zephyr gave him before leaving. The capital of Seven Waters is the Royal Shipyard of Marine. It can be said that the best shipbuilding craftsmen in the world are gathered there. Even many of the pirate ships were produced in the capital of Seven Waters. However, it is not known whether the construction of the sea train has been completed. Atlas thought with some anticipation. Time passed bit by bit, and Atlas, who had been sailing for several days, was finally able to vaguely see the outline of the Seven Waters capital. The main part of the urban architecture of the Seven Waters city is in the shape of a dome, a very Muslim-style building. The upper part is a huge fountain, and special sea currents constantly maintain its operation. The main body of the entire island is like a bunker. There are seven huge passages above the bunker. Ships from all walks of life can sail into the Seven Waters capital from here. There are also ports next to the passages for ships to dock. Due to its special status, the capital of Seven Waters has a lot of people coming and going. It can be said that it is a mixed bag of good and bad, so even if Atlas is wearing a marine uniform, he will not look particularly out of place here. Of course, if there is any unopened sea, if the thief wants to cause trouble, Atlas doesn't mind adding to his military exploits. But Atlas did not enter through these seven waterways. Instead, according to what Zephyr said, he bypassed the front and walked towards Hulk Island in the capital of Seven Waters. Unlike the Hulk Island in Atlas' memory, the Hulk Island at this time was filled with all kinds of materials and garbage, and looked a bit dilapidated and desolate. Maybe Frankie's family had not yet been established, so it was a little chaotic. Hulk Island was once the location of Tom's workshop, the largest shipyard in the capital of Seven Waters. However, it was revealed to be Roger's ship builder and was sentenced to death by the world government. However, Tom asked the world government to complete the construction. The sea train died generously again. But in the end, the world government agreed to Tom's request and said that if the project was completed on time, he would be exempted from the death penalty. After Atlas landed on Hulk Island, a young man with blue spiky hair and wearing only a pair of red underwear walked towards him. He looked to be about the same age as Atlas. He looked at Atlas with some caution. The marine uniform on his body said, Who are you? We do not provide shipbuilding services here for the time being. Frame, his previous name didn't have a good impression of people from world government, even though Marine was just one of the affiliated organizations of world government. Ah, kid, are you the talker here? I'll come over to find Mr. Tom. Atlas looked at this strange young man and said, in fact, he has not thought about buying a speedboat, but because he is short of money now, he has to try his luck here. Maybe Tom just likes him. Just fix it for him. What do you want to do with Tom? He's not here. When Frame heard that he was looking for Tom, a trace of panic flashed across his face. However, he wisely did not reveal the relationship between himself and Tom's master and apprentice, but instead placed his hope that he could send Atlas away. Well, I'm asking Mr. Tom to help me renovate the ship. Of course, Mr. Tom's disciples can also do it. Atlas said, looking up and down at Flam, who was a little stiff, with a meaningful look. Ah. Yes, I am Tom's favorite disciple, Frame. Seeing that his little idea was revealed, Frame did not hide it anymore and made his identity clear. However, we don't have time to renovate the ship for you. In fact, it was not Frame who deliberately made things difficult for Atlas, but because Tom was building a sea train, and Frame had been helping, and this was related to Tom's wealth and life. Even if Tom himself doesn't care about it, it's impossible for the disciples like him not to take it to heart. Ah, 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 okay then, sorry to bother you, kid. Atlas heard this and no longer forced Fram. He was not the kind of person who liked to force others to make things difficult. Since the other party was like this he simply refused, so Atlas could only think of other options. Maybe there would be some kind-hearted pirates who would donate generously, Atlas thought with some self-comfort. Wait a minute, brother Marine, I can modify the ship for you. Just as Atlas turned around to leave, a rich male voice appeared behind Frame. 
Atlas narrowed his eyes and looked at the man in front of him with blue-purple hair and a little beard on his chin. He was wearing a boatman's uniform. His work clothes were a little dirty. He had obviously just come back from work, but there was something in the pocket of his black work clothes. A snow-white mouse head is revealed, which looks a bit weird. What a strange combination, Atlas commented in his mind. Iceberg. Frame was a little confused and didn't understand why the iceberg came. Originally, he was about to send away the marine in front of him. Hello, my name is Bingshan, and I am a disciple of Master Tom. Bingshan did not give Frame a chance to ask questions, and slowly stretched out his rough palm in front of Atlas. My name is Kanos Atlas, Captain of Naval Headquarters. Atlas didn't mind, and went straight up to shake Bingshan's hand, then looked at the man with some confusion, quietly waiting for his words. Hem, Flam snorted with disdain, obviously looking down on Atlas's position. Atlas doesn't care. As for his position, he estimates that he will be officially appointed to a new military rank after he returns to his headquarters to report on his duties. Sir Atlas, I can help you modify the ship for free, but I hope you agree to a condition. Bingshan explained, ignoring the unhappy Fram. Oh. Tell me about it. Atlas was a little curious. Logically speaking, what kind of help could he, a small captain, do to them? Tom was mostly exposed to high-level things, such as world government, Roger and the like. I hope that if we are no longer here one day, Mr. Atlas can help take care of Flam. Hey. 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 Bingshan, what nonsense are you talking about on your own? At this time, Frame didn't buy it when he heard this, and said a little speechlessly. Then why did Mr. Bingshan choose to entrust me with a little captain? Atlas had to admire Bingshan's vision and foresight. Although world government granted Tom amnesty, he was still not convinced of world government's credibility. Of. Strong man, I feel the power of a strong man in you. Oh. Really. Then I will leave my ship to you. I will pick it up in three days. But let me make it clear first, first I'm a marine. After saying that, he didn't care whether Bingshan understood it or not. He turned around and left. He still had to find a place to stay and wait for his ship to be renovated. Who would need to be taken care of by a stinky guy like you? Frame's somewhat angry voice came from behind Atlas. Three days later, it was still Hulk Island. Atlas and Bingshan met here as promised, but that brat Frame did not follow him, and the two of them tacitly agreed not to talk about the conditions for that day. This was an agreement between men, and Bingshan believed it. Atlas will comply. Let's go, your speedboat is still in the same place. The two of them didn't exchange greetings when they met, and went straight to the point where Atlas' speedboat was parked. Soon, Atlas saw the speedboat he had longed for. It could be said that it looked completely different from the one he had before. The pure white color scheme was a bit like the small yacht in Atlas's impression. The layout on the boat was nothing. Big changes, still a separate bedroom and storage room. It can only be said that the appearance is very different from the previous one, but Atlas did not observe the power system he wanted to modify for the time being, so he turned his head slightly and looked at the iceberg with confusion. Your hull is too small to add a new power system, so I used some impact shells to install on the stern, but the material of the hull is what it is, so it may not be able to withstand the impact of the impact shells for too long. Bingshan glanced at Atlas, fearing that Atlas didn't know what an impact shell was, and continued to explain, this impact shell is produced in the White Sea of Sky Island. It is rarely circulated in Qinghai, so the number is somewhat scarce. The price is also relatively expensive. It's okay. I don't need to drive for a long time anyway. Atlas waved his hand nonchalantly. Anyway, he only needed it for the journey to the G8 branch. It didn't matter if it was scrapped after arriving. Oh, by the way, what's its speed? The speed can reach 70 knots per hour. So fast. Atlas was a little surprised. You must know that 70 nautical miles is equivalent to about 129 kilometers, which means that this small speedboat can reach a speed of 129 kilometers per hour, which can be said to be very fast. It's scary. With the help of this ship, it won't be long before we can reach the G8 branch. Sure enough, Sharpening a knife is as good as chopping wood, and it was not worth his days of tossing here. Hey, hey, hey. Iron Wall Fortress G8. Pirates, don't even try to get close to it. 188 cannons pointed at you. The peacekeeping hedgehog. 
G8 we are proud of. After several days of running around, Atlas finally reached the G8 branch. I have to say that the transformation of this speedboat was really good, and it took much less time than Atlas expected. But before entering G8 Fortress, I heard bursts of singing. What a branch with different styles, Atlas said with emotion. From the front, G8 Fortress is truly worthy of the title of, Fortress. The entire fortress is mainly composed of a ring-shaped island. There are steel patrol towers and various military arrangements on the island. The entire closed loop only has one opening. The opening serves as the entrance and exit of the fortress, and a huge steel gate blocks the exit. It can be said that if you enter, you will definitely have no chance of escaping. As for Luffy's exit in the original work, it is purely due to the care of the protagonist Halo. In addition to the terrain, basically every corner is tightly fortified, and there are more than a hundred cannons mounted on the iron walls of the fortress, exuding a deep chill, but I don't know if it is like what the song says. 188 door, it can be said that it is worthy of being the branch starting with Marine G. Hey, I am Recruit Atlas from the headquarters. Sengoku Admiral asked me to come here for the recruitment camp graduation trial. Atlas stood on the speedboat and shouted to Marine patrolling above. Ah, I'm going to ask for permission right now. The Marine patrolling the fortress heard the order from Sengoku Admiral, and immediately did not dare to neglect it. He quickly went to ask his superiors for instructions, but did not directly open the door to Atlas. Just kidding, this is a military base directly controlled by naval headquarters. How could someone just open the door with just a few words? Soon, a big man with a hairy face, wearing a marine hat and a marine justice coat appeared above the fortress. He looked a little anxious. After arriving, he rushed forward with half of his body almost leaning out of the fortress. Atlas was really afraid that he would suddenly fall. Hey, is this Captain Kano's Atlas? That's right. Please open the door and let me in. Atlas replied calmly. Boom. Squeak. As soon as he finished speaking, the huge steel gate slowly rose from the sea, leaving just an entrance for Atlas's speedboat to enter. Hello. Captain Atlas, I am Drake. I hold the position of major in this fortress. If you have any questions, you can tell me. Teacher Zephyr has personally told me. Drake looked at the young man in front of him with some emotion. He really couldn't believe that this was the monster that Zephyr said could rival Vice Admiral. When he thought about himself again, he suddenly felt that he had lived as long as a dog. Drake. Atlas was a little confused. Isn't this the name of the fallen rear admiral in the future? Logically speaking, he should still be suffering abuse on his undercover father's ship at this time, right? And it doesn't seem like that guy looks like that either. He probably just happens to have the same name. Ah, hello, Major Drake, please give me some advice. Atlas came back to his senses and quickly greeted the hairy-faced major. Then I'll take you to the arranged accommodation and rest first. Drake was obviously impatient. Before even saying a few words to Atlas, he hurriedly took Atlas towards the dormitory. After about half an hour, Atlas finally arrived at the dormitory building. As for the accommodation environment, Drake arranged a single-room dormitory for Atlas. After all, Zephyr had instructed him to give Atlas some preferential treatment. Considering that Atlas had traveled for a long time before arriving at the fortress, Drake said goodbye to Atlas after giving some instructions. Atlas washed up a little, took off his clothes and fell asleep. After all, he hadn't had a good sleep these days, and even Superman's body couldn't bear it. As night falls, black becomes the main theme. The G8 fortress is still brightly lit, and soldiers coming and going are patrolling in an orderly manner. Hem. Atlas, who had just woken up, stretched out comfortably and looked at the G8 fortress in the night. He decided to go to the cafeteria to have dinner first, then walk around and get familiar with the environment. This was where he would be for the next three years. The place where you wants to stay. So, Atlas ran out of the dormitory building and followed various signs to find the canteen. Ah, they are all vegetables. I don't like cauliflower and carrots. What is the second rule of the eighth branch? Ah, I know, look, I ate it. Atlas, who had just walked to the door of the cafeteria, was a little stunned when he heard the conversation between a man and a woman. Logically speaking, there should be no one in the restaurant at this time. But Atlas didn't care. 
After all, there were strange people in this world, and maybe they just like to eat so late. Thinking of Atlas, I planned to open the door of the restaurant. There was a man and a woman sitting at the dining table. The man had burgundy hair, a thick mustache and a Chinese character face. He was wearing a marine uniform, and the woman had long hair. She is very beautiful, wearing a chef's hat on her head, and looks like a kitchen staff in the canteen, but the two of them look very close. When they saw the door open from the outside, Jonathan and Jessica suddenly looked surprised. The two of them deliberately chose this time to come to the restaurant when no one was around. Hey, Marine over there, are you new here? Do you know the rules of the fortress? Jessica saw that Atlas came in a little strangely, so she asked a little fiercely. Jonathan, who was sitting aside, didn't know what he was thinking about. His eyes kept dripping and he looked at Atlas up and down. My name is Kano's Atlas, a recruit from this headquarters. As for the rules of the fortress. Sorry, I came here on the first day and didn't know, Jonathan Vice Admiral. Atlas was a little confused. Major Drake had never told him what the rules were in G8 Fortress. As for why he recognized Jonathan at once, it wasn't that Atlas had seen him before, but the epaulets on Jonathan's code of justice told him. Jonathan was probably the only commander in the entire fortress with the rank of Vice Admiral. First, wash your hands before eating. Second, there must be no leftovers. Third, don't talk about work during meals. Fourth, you must brush your teeth after meals. Boy, you haven't washed your hands yet. Jonathan on the side was somewhat complimentary. Yes. Atlas responded loudly, and then went straight to the sink in the kitchen. He was still a person who followed the Romans. Since he came to the G8 fortress, he had to abide by the rules of the fortress. Ah, um, Miss Chef, could you please help me prepare a sumptuous dinner? After washing his hands, Atlas said with some grit, after all, his stomach was already protesting strongly. As for whether he would offend this lady who seemed to be untouchable, Atlas couldn't care so much, although she seemed to be either Jonathan's girlfriend or his wife. Ah, just call me Jessica. As for the food, sit down and wait, and I will prepare it for you. Fortunately, this female chef named Jessica is more considerate and not as violent as she appears. At least as a chef, she is undoubtedly very qualified, which makes Atlas he took a long breath. Ah, these are really unpleasant vegetables. Jonathan on the side couldn't help but frowned and complained when he saw Jessica leaving, but he kept moving his hands and ate all the vegetables on the plate in a few clicks. Obviously, he had no intention of the fortress that Jessica had planned. The rules are also followed diligently. Vice Admiral Jonathan, I want to take over the mission tomorrow and start killing pirates. Atlas sat down across from Jonathan. Seeing that dinner was settled, Atlas couldn't help but have ideas about the next graduation trial. Now, what is the third rule of the branch? Boy. Jonathan did not answer Atlas's question, but instead asked about the fortress rules that had just been displayed. Atlas raised his eyebrows when he heard this, then fell silent and waited quietly for dinner. After having enough wine and food. Let's go, kid, come to a place with me. Seeing Atlas sweeping away the food on the table like a whirlwind, Jonathan stood up and motioned for Atlas to follow him. So, Atlas watched as Jonathan took out fishing rods from the office, then ran to a corner of the fortress to catch fish. Ah, I'm sorry, I only have one fishing rod here, don't you mind? Jonathan looked at Atlas with empty hands, scratched his head and smiled. Hey hey hey. Jonathan, Vice Admiral, you don't look embarrassed like this. Atlas couldn't help but complain in his heart, but what came out of his mouth was completely different. It's okay, Jonathan Vice Admiral, I don't really like fishing. Ha 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 ha, that's good, but you kid. Jonathan narrowed his eyes and continued, I never fish for nothing. Ah, about my mission. Atlas didn't understand what Jonathan meant, but he still picked up the question he had just interrupted in the restaurant. Well, let's go find Drake tomorrow. Ha ha. What a hot-tempered brat. The first half of the Grand Line is a place called Paradise. A somewhat, awkward, pirate ship was swaying on the sea. The broken hull seemed to tell the story of the fierce battles it had experienced before. Only the pirate flag hanging on the thick mast was left. The torn piece of cloth is lingering. Captain. Galil and the others, their life cards have been burned out. 
A guy with a white gauze on his head and a bandage on his arm shouted in horror. As soon as the words fell, the somewhat silent atmosphere on the boat was suddenly broken, like a stone thrown into a calm lake, stirring up thousands of waves. Finally, everyone couldn't stand the despair in their hearts and cried loudly. Woo! We shouldn't go to the new world, what kind of monsters are they? Ah! Got it, stop screaming. A bald man with rough skin and slightly dark skin impatiently shouted to stop some noisy pirates. He seemed to be the captain of this pirate ship, but there was no trace of sadness on the face at the news of the death of the comrade who stayed behind. There was no sadness or joy in his face, only a trace of fear remained in the eyes that were not very big. Otherwise, just find a place to be a rich man with peace of mind. The captain was a little tired, and even thought about retiring. The reason for this was not only the large number of casualties of the personnel and the destruction of the fleet, but also the fear of that man, that man who was like a devil. Everyone on the ship was still immersed in fear and sorrow, unaware that their captain planned to take away the only treasure left on the ship and become a rich man. Of course, even knowing it is of no use. Because this is the sorrow of the weak. Dong dong dong, dong dong dong. Atlas came to the staff office early the next morning. Maybe it was too early. Major Drake was the only one in the office at this time, but the door of the office was not closed, but Atlas was still polite. The ground knocked on the door. Is something wrong? Captain Atlas. Drake was a little surprised to see Atlas standing at the door. He quickly stopped what he was doing and asked Atlas's purpose in confusion. Major Drake, Vice Admiral Jonathan called me here. Jonathan Vice Admiral. Drake asked in confusion. You just arrived at the base yesterday, and you only met Jonathan Vice Admiral. Immediately, Atlas briefly explained his purpose to Major Drake. You want to go out of the fortress to participate in the mission. Drake looked a little surprised. Didn't you just settle down yesterday? Don't you need to rest in the base for a few days before going on the mission? It's okay, Major Drake. I'm in good condition now and can participate in the mission of catching pirates at any time. Okay then. Major Drake hesitated for a moment, then immediately started rummaging through the desk full of official documents. After a while, Drake shook his head apologetically and said, Sorry, because our fortress is in a relatively forward position in the first half of the Grand Line, so it is relatively peaceful. We can only provide you with some information about pirates and battleship operations. There are relatively few, but a group of pirates who recently returned from the New World will pass near the fortress tomorrow. Drake hesitated again and said, However, I personally do not recommend that you pursue this pirate group. There is a group of new pirates here who have just entered the Grand Line from the Four Seas. With your strength, it should be more than enough to chase them. Obviously, Drake somewhat discounted Zephyr's evaluation of Atlas's strength that he heard from Jonathan, thinking that it was just a teacher's habitual exaggeration of his favorite disciple. I want to know the information about the pirates who came back from New World. Atlas didn't bother to care about what Drake was thinking. Anyway, he was too lazy to spend time dealing with that little miscellaneous fish. But, seeing that Drake wanted to say something else, Atlas took the information in his hand, politely thanked Drake and left. What an arrogant brat. Drake looked at Atlas retreating back, slightly annoyed. But he turned around and hurriedly ran out of the staff office and walked to the base commander's office. Atlas, who left the office, naturally did not notice Drake's behavior. He picked up the still warm piece of information in his hand and read it. The Ekram Pirates, Captain Ekram, has a bounty of 200 million Baileys, Vice Captain Wirtz has a bounty of 160 million, and Officers Galil, Ibe, and Duarte have a bounty of 50 million each. It ranges from 90 million to 90 million. Katakori encountered the Big Mom Pirates in the New World. He was defeated and seriously injured and escaped. Only one of the three fleets was left. Most of the crew members were killed or injured. The life and death of the vice captain was unknown. All the cadres were left behind. New world. Hey, I thought it was some kind of big pirate, but it turned out to be just a lost dog. Atlas curled his lips and said with some disdain. It is estimated that this group of pirates wanted to challenge Big Mom in a pretentious manner, but the whole army was wiped out before they even saw him. There is always a shortage of such self-righteous guys in this sea. 
According to the route of this group of pirates, it is expected that they will pass through the waters near G8 tomorrow, so Atlas now plans to visit the training ground of the fortress. The training ground of G8 fortress is very large. Whether it is the walls, floor, or ceiling, they are all wrapped in thick iron sheets, which is just enough for people to show off their skills without fear of damaging the venue. With Atlas's current physical strength, ordinary training can no longer meet his needs, and there are no sparring partners like Zephyr and Shuzo here. As for Jonathan Vice Admiral, although he and Sakazuki were from the same training camp, and the two seemed to have a good relationship, and it was expected that their strength would not be too bad, it was impossible for the top officer of the fortress to neglect his official duties and come to accompany him. He, a little captain, was making fists and kicks. So Atlas chose the simplest training method and asked someone from the logistics department for a huge piece of hardened steel. He could only use his fists to deal with it first. The time for training always passed quickly, and it was night again in the blink of an eye. Atlas looked at the pitted iron body in front of him and the blood dripping from it and let out a long breath. He did not cover his fists with military colors, but struck with pure bare fists, so his fists were always stuck in a cycle of injury healing injury, but the effect was quite remarkable. Atlas glanced at the sky outside the window, cleaned up the traces after training, and walked towards the cafeteria, but he did not see Vice Admiral Jonathan today. At the G8 Fortress port, a Marine Blue single-person speedboat was quietly moored there. This speedboat is the same as the one that Atlas drove from the headquarters before. They are both standard military speedboats. However, due to the transformation of the impact shell, the speedboat supports Atlas when he comes to the G8 Fortress. Passed away and passed away. The speedboat in front of him was obtained by Atlas from an old man in the maintenance team of the branch. It took Atlas several bottles of wine to successfully get the speedboat approved. After a while, Atlas headed out of the fortress in the drunken morning light. The sun penetrates the clouds and shines evenly on the blue sea. After several hours of sailing, the huge G8 fortress was already out of reach, and it was surrounded by nothingness, giving people a sense of confusion. Well, we should be able to meet the Ekram pirates if we follow the route. Atlas carefully compared the information in his mind to pass the boring time on the sea voyage. Near the sea area of G8 Fortress, a battle-damaged and dilapidated pirate ship was swaying on the vast sea, with a few bandaged pirates sitting sparsely on the wide deck. Many of them seemed to be strangely pale due to excessive blood loss. A mast covered with scars leaned against a bald man with a cold expression, but his face looked much rosier, as if the previous injury had almost healed. Ekram. Where are our next plans? Next to the bald man was a pirate who looked very sick. He seemed to be recovering from a serious illness, but his words did not show the same fear as others towards the bald man. Let's go back to South Blue to recruit the men we lost, and then consider the next step. Ekram slowly told his plan to Vice Captain Wirtz, but Wirtz didn't notice the ruthlessness flashing in Ekram's eyes. Captain Ekram. At this moment, on the only intact watchtower on the ship, a pirate in charge of reconnaissance suddenly changed his face and quickly warned Ekram. Oh no, Marine is found at the three o'clock direction. Um, Ekram and Wirtz were also a little nervous. You must know that they have lost so many personnel and most of their main combat effectiveness has been lost. Although they will not completely lose their combat effectiveness, their ability to fight against the enemy will definitely be greatly reduced. Now they meet Marine. The two people immediately looked at each other and asked loudly, how many people are there on the other side? They were ready for a last-ditch battle, and Ekram's idea of retirement became stronger. This sea was so cruel that he was tired. It seems to be. The investigating pirate was a little unsure, just a marine. What? The pirates on the pirate ship were a little frightened and angry. Although they lost a lot of people in New World, they were still among the best pirates in the park. Just sending a marine to chase them would be a bit despising them. Children, get the boat over to Lousy. Kill that guy for Lousy. Ekram opened his mouth cruelly, with a cruel look in his eyes, as if he wanted to vent his recent dissatisfaction on the incoming Marine. At this time, Atlas also discovered the broken ship of the Ekram pirates, and immediately stood up from the speedboat. Moonwalk. There seemed to be invisible stairs in the air. Atlas slowly climbed up the stairs and looked down at the panicked pirates on the deck. Why panic? 
It's just moonwalk. Ekram shouted, as a pirate who has arrived in the new world, he will naturally not be intimidated by the mere marine six styles. At most, he will be wary of the young marine in front of him. Although monsters are everywhere in the new world, it is still relatively rare for marines to moonwalk in the park. What's more, this guy only has the rank of captain, so he may be a monster secretly cultivated within marine. Hey, that little marine over there, lousy as Ekram with a bounty of 200 million belly. Ekram obviously flinched, hoping that his huge bounty would scare Atlas away, but he obviously misjudged the situation. The higher his bounty, the more excited Atlas became. I know, it's just a lost dog. As soon as he finished speaking, before Ekram could get angry, Atlas had already touched third generation Kidetsu on his waist. Yidaliu Shinglo. Countless huge slashes were directed towards the pirate ship below like falling meteors. The expressions of a large number of pirates were suddenly frozen in shock at the last moment. The originally broken pirate ship was directly cut into pieces by a large number of slashes. Crumbs. Asshole. Lousy is going to kill you. Looking at the pirate ship that had been reduced to pieces and the corpses that were constantly floating, Ekram couldn't help but cursed angrily. Of course, he didn't feel sorry for these men. They can be recruited at any time when they are gone, but their only remaining treasure completely sank to the bottom of the sea under Atlas's slash, and his dream of becoming a rich man was also shattered. Ekram. Calm down. Wurtz, who survived on the side, tried to hold back the furious Ekram. Now there were only two of them left in the huge pirate group, and now they didn't even have a place to stand, and most of their bodies were soaked in water. Fortunately, the only thing is that neither of them have fruit abilities. Soon, the two found a relatively large wreckage and barely avoided the embarrassing situation of being soaked in the seawater. And Atlas watched them struggle quietly in midair. Although hovering in the air with moonwalk consumes a lot of physical strength, it is nothing compared to Atlas's bottomless physical fitness. Master Marine, can you let us go? I just want to retire and become a rich man. Ekram, who had calmed down, immediately began to beg for mercy after seeing Atlas's terrifying strength, but Atlas's keen sense of knowledge still captured the murderous aura in this guy. Ha! The howl of a defeated dog. Atlas sneered and waved the third generation Kidetsu in his hand again. Hey, hey, hey. Lousy is willing to impel down. Lousy surrenders. Spare me. Please capture me and impel down. Asshole Marine. Lousy will never let you go even if he dies. What a Marine. Atlas turned a deaf ear to Ekram's pleas and insults. After all, who would argue with a dead man? One blade style crescent moon. The rich armament color clung to third generation Kidetsu, and a crescent shaped slash came out from the sword. Aha. Uh -huh. Soon, a line of blood slowly appeared on the bodies of Ekram and Wurtz. The huge slashing power continued unabated and slashed backwards. The scarlet seawater was immediately cut in half. The sea breeze is gentle. Their bodies were suddenly broken along the blood line. Their upper bodies were lying on the sea surface, and their lower bodies were sitting cross-legged on the wreckage. From a distance, it looks like a lost dog. Scattered shipwrecks floated on the sea, the blue water was stained scarlet with blood, and there were mutilated corpses everywhere. From time to time, there were one or two vultures hovering in the sky, waiting for today's lunch. Atlas took a look at the tragic environment around him, and scanned the battlefield over and over again. He would not let a single person survive, and he would do his best to eliminate evil. The ride back was peaceful. After sailing for about a day, Atlas returned to the port of G8 Fortress on a refreshing morning in the gentle sea breeze. Atlas first went to the staff office to report to Major Drake on the specific situation of the battle, and then went to the cafeteria for a hearty meal. He had been eating dry food for the past two days, and Atlas felt as if the bird was about to fade out of his mouth. What? You destroyed the entire Ekram pirates alone. At the staff office, Drake's roar came from the office. He was already prepared to receive the news of Atlas's death. Yesterday, he was still complaining that everyone was so willful. Even Jonathan Vice Admiral did not object. Atlas's mission, he didn't expect Atlas to give him a surprise today. Well, don't make such a fuss. Atlas picked his ears and said nonchalantly. He is just a loser, and the bounty is too unworthy of the name. I guess this guy Ekram did a lot of burning, killing and looting. Come on, please tell me the details of your battle in detail. 
Drake calmed down a little, sat back on the office chair, suppressed the excitement in his heart, and asked Atlas in a gentle manner. Now Drake has completely believed Zephyr's evaluation of Atlas. Just kidding, that was a big pirate with a bounty of 200 million, and there were other pirates with varying bounties. The young man in front of him was destroyed by himself. Even if it's a fight, it's amazing. As for the suspicion that Atlas lied about his military exploits, are you kidding me? He is just a living resource for Marines Intelligence Agency. It is impossible for such a large pirate group to disappear out of thin air. There is a saying that goes, wherever you walk, you will leave traces. Now, well, I just walked over and stabbed him, and then stabbed him again. Well, that's it. Atlas raised his arm and gestured to Drake in a serious manner. Huh. It's gone. Drake, who was about to listen to Atlas's tirade, couldn't help but was speechless. He even took off his pants. Can you show me this? Okay, it's okay. I'm going to report to Vice Admiral Jonathan. You can leave first. Drake looked at Atlas's calm face and was filled with disgusting words. He didn't know where to vomit. After coming out of Drake's office, Atlas went back to his dormitory, took a shower, and rushed to the cafeteria. I don't know if it was because it was meal time and there were a lot of people coming and going in the cafeteria, so Atlas queued up. It had been a little long, and by the time Atlas had prepared his meal and was about to find a seat to sit down. Holy shit, is that the kid? How young. As expected of someone who came out of our elite training camp. How terribly excessive. The noisy discussions continued to penetrate into Atlas's ears. With his current physical condition, even without using observation hockey, he could basically hear any small movement around him clearly, not to mention these soldiers. He didn't cover it up deliberately. After probably, eavesdropping, for a while, Atlas probably understood the reason why they were discussing him. It turned out that it was Jonathan Vice Admiral who informed the entire fortress of his achievements, which meant that Atlas didn't care much about these things. I don't know, but it can be said that he is now famous in G8 Fortress. After a hearty meal, Atlas sneaked out of the side door of the cafeteria. He didn't want to be watched like a monkey here. Hey, Atlas, I was just looking for you. Vice Admiral Jonathan asked you to come to his office. Not long after Atlas left the cafeteria, he met Drake. Drake was worried about where to find Atlas, but he didn't expect such a coincidence and quickly called Atlas. Yes. Dong dong dong. Please come in. Atlas pushed open the door and came in. The base's top officer, Vice Admiral Jonathan, was playing with his beloved fishing rod. When Atlas came in, he gently put the fishing rod aside and crossed his fingers with his hands. On the desk. Well, he is indeed the monster Mr. Zephyr calls him. The big pirate with 200 million belly was easily defeated. Jonathan said in a tepid tone. It can be said that Jonathan belongs to the kind of Buddhist generals, but he is definitely not the fishing-like Buddhist type of Porosalino, but has everything in his hands. That kind of wisdom and composure. But what is strange is that this kind of person is actually close friends with radicals like Sakazuki. From this, it can be seen that this ordinary Mr. Vice Admiral is definitely the kind of person who shows off his appearance. It's just luck, and that guy is also a parallel importer. Atlas said modestly. Now, don't be humble. I'll assign you a mission. Jonathan waved his hand, just kidding. The reward of 200 million belly cannot be underestimated no matter how low it is, not to mention that guy is from the new world, even if it's just a pathetic loser. What mission? As soon as he heard that there was another mission to do, Atlas' expression suddenly became serious. There are several pirate groups that have been hanging around Alabasta recently, so I hope you will go and take a look at the situation. Alabasta. This seems to be outside the jurisdiction of our fortress, right? Atlas raised an eyebrow. Ah, indeed, but the branch in charge of that sea area has sent us a message asking for help. I can't just sit back and watch. And. This matter may involve Shichibukai. There was a meaningful look in Jonathan's eyes, but his face was calm and unpredictable. Shichibukai. That sand crocodile. Atlas was a little surprised. The first thing Atlas thought of about the Shichibukai related to Alabasta was the crocodile guy, but he didn't expect him to take Pluton's mind so quickly. Ah, how do you know? That guy disappeared after being taught a lesson by Whitebeard. I didn't expect to hear information about him again in Alabasta. 
I just don't know what this guy wants to do. Go and deal with those gangs of pirates and see what Crocodile is planning. Okay, I promise to complete the task. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support my channel.